Wow. You know what? Let's just talk about the corneas. I can't even think of all the time. I mean, damn, it's so me. I mean, of course, you can say Vanilla Ice. You know what I'm saying? You can say Young MC. You know, people like that. But I mean, right now, yeah. Kingy, Corny, Young Bird, Corny. Um, who else I think is Corny? I like Shorty Lowe's music, but he's Corny. He can't rap up a damn. You know, that, isn't that crazy? I'm saying the game is so crazy now that I can actually ride around to a unit in the city city and write the song, but be saying in the back of my mind, damn, he can't rap up a damn. <laughs> You know, but I mean, I like Shorty Lowe. I think, I think, I think that his music is cool. Mm. His music is cool, but he's a, he can't rap. He's a corny ass rapper. But Young Bird and Kingy are corny ass rappers and they corny ass people. It's a difference. You know, Young Bird is the hip hop pinata. <laughs> you know, the, the, you know them pinatas that you hang from the ceiling and everybody gets to stick and hits on the pinata and hope something fall out. That's, that's Young Bird. You hang Young Bird from the ceiling and you hit him, his transformer chain might fall out. A couple thousand dollars might fall out. Like, he's just, he's just corny. Like, salute the man for slapping the shit out of him. In Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, salute to my man, um, uh, 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 J. and Play out in L.A. They was the first people to rob him. Oh, they, they they called him they called him before them dudes in Detroit did. They was the first people to rob him, but you know, salute the young brother, the hip hop pinata, man. God bless him. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. That'd be Charlamagne being a host and and doing all sorts of things outside of just the hosting thing and being in the industry. How would you say like the the I wouldn't say the DJ, but like the radio aspect is contributing to hip hop these days. The, okay, hold on. You said the how is the radio aspect contributing to hip hop? Do you think it's dying? Like the use of the radio is dying down in today's market, or do you feel that it's it's increasing? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Radio, radio, radio has contributed to the demise of hip hop because well, nobody on the radio played was hot no more. You know what I'm saying? They play records because. Either one, the program director is getting paid for them, or you know the record labels are sponsoring whatever trips, yada yada yada. I mean, half of these records that are real bullshit records, like let's, let's for, for example, like a record like Laffy Taffy to me was garbage, you know. But the reason people would like Laffy Taffy is because they were programmed to like it. That's why they call it radio programming. If I play anything, I can play the sound of me farting on the radio 80 times a week, and eventually somebody will be like, "Yo, I like this fart shit, yo." This part shit sounds dope. Because you've been programmed to like this record. Your, your mind has been conditioned. And it's not even to like the record. It's to tolerate it. Mm-hmm. Like something will get played so much that you just you, you tolerate it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it becomes like a second nature. Like how many times have you been in the car and found yourself humming a record that you know you really don't like? Oh, but you done man. heard it so much, seen it on TV so much that you can't help but say, damn, you know, girl, I'll shake that, happy, happy, or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, you know, the God bless all them dudes that make music like that because to them, that record was dope. Mm. But somewhere along the line, somebody got paid and caused the program directors or the radio stations to play that record 60 times a week to program us to like those records. Mm. So I definitely think that radio has contributed to the demise of hip hop. I definitely, definitely do feel that way. No doubt, no doubt. So I mean, what else? What else do we got planned for Charlemagne? You seem like you're on your grizzly right now, man. Oh man, I mean, what else is there for me to be on? Like you know, like I, I, my, my main goal, man. Like one of my dreams. Like I'm one of those people. I write out my long term goals and my short term goals, and I write out my, my 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 hopes and my aspirations and my dreams because I love when they come into fruition, and I love to see things. I love to see my thoughts actually manifest itself into the real world. So, like, my biggest concern right now, man, is just really putting the state of South Carolina where it needs to be, man. Putting South Carolina on the map as far as the game is concerned. We got a lot of talented artists, man. Like, my brother, I just mentioned Little Wu. You got a brother from Charleston, South Carolina named Marley Ma. You know, um, you got you got Tyler Green. You got you got Macadon. You know, you, you got a lot of people in South Carolina that are very dope and very talented. And I, I feel like they can compete with any region that's popping now. And not even on the rhymes, even on the beat. You got people like Nah Mill doing great tracks. Uh, Tony Gunn's doing great tracks. Venom Vendetta doing great tracks. So it's like, we the same state that produced Hootie and the Blowfish. We produced James Brown. We produced Andy Stone. But now it's time for that rap 
game to step up. You know, we've had uh, we've had people come out and use other genres of music, but we've never had nobody in hip hop, man. And I just feel like it just takes somebody in my position to put everybody where they need to be. Like, you know, and that's that's one thing a lot of brothers don't do, man. They get over that wall. Like, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Denmark Vici was a little slave, you know, who came from um, the, the West West Indies. And he came from the West Indies, and he was a slave here in America, and he was actually a slave in Charleston, South Carolina. And he won the lottery. He won like $1,400 in the lottery, which was a lot of money back then. So what he did with his money was he bought his freedom. And after he bought his freedom, he opened up a carpentry shop. So he was doing good out here. Like, he didn't even have to look back. But in his mind, all he kept saying, all he kept thinking about was, Damn, all them other slaves are still locked up in Charleston, South Carolina. So what he did, he led one of the largest slave revolts in the history of America. But before that revolt could go down, one of the other slaves ratted him out. So the revolt never got to go down. So those slaves in Charleston never got to be set free at that time. So it's like me, I look at myself as somebody who's been put into a position where I'm good, you know what I mean? As far as radio is concerned, I make six figures a year. It's a low six figures, but I make six figures a year. You know, I'm, I'm out here, you know, doing these, producing these TV shows, and, you know, my, my albums are doing good, my independent compilations, my mixtapes are crazy. So I'm good, I, I, I'm good, and I'm going to continue to be better individually. But what should that individual success do for my whole state? It's still brothers down there that not in the position of power that they need to be in. So being that I'm in a position of power and I'm able to help others, that's my ultimate goal, man. I'm Jen Malvici, but ain't no ain't nobody gonna stop my slave revolt. You know what I'm saying? So you know I'm, I'm, I'm about to let I'm about to South Carolina's about to you mark my words. You remember Charlemagne the God said this on October twentieth, two thousand and eight. Next year, all you gonna hear about is South Carolina. Mark my words. The same way, the same way Houston, Texas, and Miami, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, and all those places in the South popped off. All you gonna hear about is Charleston, South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina. We bust stupid dope moves. That's all you gonna hear. Mark my words. But, but you gotta send me these tracks. I didn't know half of the cats. I'm about to email them to you right now. I'm okay. at Wendy's right now. I'm about to order me a number of fucking. What is, I'm about to order that new Buffalo chicken shit. I love that new yeah. Buffalo chicken sandwich. I'm about to order one of those. And I'm gonna be in the crib in 10 minutes. And I'm gonna email you the record. Right. You gotta send me your email. I think I got it. But send me your email. I'm gonna send you a record to blast off tonight. What time you get off the air? 2, 2 a.m. Oh man, I'm gonna call, matter of fact, I'm gonna send you the record and call you back to introduce the record. Okay, okay, that's what's up then. I'm, I'm, I'm about to send it to you right now. Alright, alright. Alright, alright, y'all be easy. See y'all, see that? I'm gonna talk to y'all in a second. No doubt, no doubt. Alright, so call us back, homie. I got you. Alright, what? There's Charlemagne the God. Like I said, out freaking spoken. <laughs> he went in on, on, on Wheezy, Chingy, he said and Wheezy. Bird. Wheezy. Said, um, easy, uh, Easy's corny yeah, yeah. I made a lame comment about DJs and they said fuck the mixtape DJs. Yeah. Best mixtape DJ DJ Weezy, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Weezy, I don't he's know. Man. Again. You he's know that, right? Of course he is. He's, he's sleeping again, but I don't know what he said or nothing like that. But I know he's sleeping. If y'all break the hip hop pinata, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> this guy said <laughs> This guy's the hip hop pinata. The champ is here!